Welcome to this new video. Reduce your time to reach me out, but not the quality lectures that you need to know. You can learn the basic concepts of mathematics related to economics in this video. Okay, so today we are going to learn the following topics. The first one is mathematical economics, mathematical versus literary economics, then mathematical reasoning and for problems of geometric model and finally advantages of mathematical approach and the last one is econometric economic models so let's get started and i will recommend uh, a single book fundamental methods of mathematical economics written by alpha cian for this lecture only so first of all uh, to learn the nature of mathematical economics, we can say like as mathematical economics is not a distinct branch of economics in the sense that public finance or public administration or international economics is. Rather, it's an approach to economic analysis in which the economist makes use of mathematical symbols in the measurement of problem and also draws upon known mathematical theorems to aid in reasoning. So what does the mathematical economics mean? To define mathematical economics, we more commonly, however, mathematical economics is deserved to describe cases employing mathematical techniques beyond simple geometry such as matrix algebra differential and integral calculus, differential equations, differential equations, etc. Uh, so if we want to define mathematical economics in a simple sentence, then we can say mathematical economics refers to the application of mathematics to the purely theoretical aspects of economic analysis. I think it's the best uh, and a very simple definition for mathematical economics. Next, come to the point, mathematical versus literary economics. Since mathematical economics is merely an approach to economic analysis, it should not and does not fundamentally differ from non-mathematical approach to economic analysis. The purpose of any theoretical analysis, regardless of the approach, is always to drive a set of conclusions or theorems from a given set of assumptions or postulates via a process of reasoning. Uh, we will discuss later about mathematical reasoning. The major difference between mathematical economics and literary economics is twofold. First, the assumptions and conclusions are stated in mathematical symbols rather than words and equations rather than sentences. For example, equation 1 which reflects this, but uh, in literary economics, we can say in Ceteris Paribus, if the price of a commodity rises, then the demand of that commodity decreases and vice versa, which is a demand law in simple. So in second phase, in place of literary logic, use is made of mathematical theorems of which there exists an abundance of knowledge to draw upon in the reasoning process. Look here, equation 1 defines the function but not reveals the sign of the relationship between these two variables QD and P, where QD stands for quantity demanded and P is the price of a particular commodity and f is a uh, functional notation in as much as the symbol and symbol and words are really equivalents it matters little which is chosen over the other but in is perhaps beyond dispute that symbols are more convenient to use in deductive reasoning and certainly are more conducive to conciseness and preciseness of statement. Now comes to the point of mathematical reasoning. If then form, 
if it stands for the condition and then it stands for result so mathematical theorems are usually stated in the if then form so that in order to tap the then that means result part of the theorem for their use they must first make sure that the if part or condition part does conform to the explicit assumptions adopted so you have to uh, set a form of conditions or a set of conditions or rules uh, at first to get the result of any mathematical theorems granting these points though one may still ask why it is necessary to go beyond geometric methods the answer is that while geometric analysis has the important advantage of being visual it also suffers from a serious dimensional problem for instance indifference curves only two commodities are available to see in this indifference curve uh, for, uh, for example good a and good b and you know better about indifference curve to deal more general case of three four or n goods we must instead the resort to the more flexible of tool of equations that is uh, mathematical models or mathematical symbols that is uh, in simple form we call it a mathematical economics and if we want to draw some advantages of mathematical approach then come first the language used is more concise and precise yes we stated already that in our simple uh, equation one where it is very simple and it looks very concise and precise to understand the mathematical relationship in terms of economic uh, um, theorem secondly there exists a wealth of mathematical theorems at our service to apply in economics uh, and to obtain several kinds of results then all assumptions and formulas are explicit definitely mathematical assumptions and formulas are proved and scientifically proven to apply in any kinds of analysis finally it allows us to treat the general n variable case so in case of mathematical economics we can use a lot of numbers of variable and found our result then comes to the point economic models any economic theory is necessary to an abstraction from the real world for one thing the immense complexity of the real economy makes it impossible for us to understand all the inter relationships at once not for the matter are all these interrelationships of equal importance for the understanding of the particular economic phenomenon of a study the sensible procedure is therefore to pick out what appeals to our reason to be the primary factors and relationships relevant to our problem and to focus our attention to this alone such a deliberately simplified analytical framework is called an economic model since it is the only a skeletal and rough representation of the actual economy so if we want to more simplify this uh, definition then we can say economic models is a abstract form of a real economic situation of an economy thank you all for listening these lectures